Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-earth. <clears throat> My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor. I'm here with you, as always, every Friday afternoon with my friend Griffith here. Hi, Griffith. Yes, see, Griffith is still proudly standing in front of the East Gates of Moria, looking out over the uh, the Nanduhirion here, over uh, uh, over the Dimril Dale, Azanul Bazaar, <clears throat> as the dwarves name it. Um, and uh, he's been... Uh, admiring the view of course uh, as uh, night is falling here over Khaled Zaram um, and uh, this is it this is this is all the further that Griffith has gotten still a pretty good accomplishment thanks for those of you who helped out during the uh, during the marathon that I did last Saturday um, it for those of you who weren't with us it did in fact take Griffith 14 hours to get from his battle with the Watcher in the Water all the way here uh, to the uh, East Gates of Moria in the Dimril Dale. <clears throat> he's, so he's up to Book 6, Chapter 1, uh, where he's meant to go find Haldir on Haldir's Flet uh, in Lothlorien. I'm thinking um, he's not going to do that right away, because as you can see, he... Uh, ripped through Moria so fast that he was significantly under level. In fact, one of the one of the uh, uh, sort of uh, dismaying moments near the end of the marathon, we'd gotten all the way up to the skirmishes um, right at the end of book five and, uh, you know, the defensive skirmishes. Uh, so we were, we were just we were, we were around the final turn and we were coming down the home stretch and he couldn't get in because they're minimum level 55 and he was only 54. <laughs> So uh, we had to kind of pull him in the back door. I thought we were going to be thwarted in the end. Um, so he uh, he needs to he needs to level up a little bit more. I think he's gonna he's gonna find uh, find things a little rough for him out here in the Nanduhirion. Besides which, he missed a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of areas of Moria. And I know he's going to go into Moria later. There's 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 more to do still in Moria uh, after he goes and talks to Haldir. I know, but. Um, uh, but still, there's there's uh, there's some other stuff that I'd like to look at with him in Moria. And besides, he, uh, as I said, uh, uh, gaining a couple more levels would um, not be amiss, right? So uh, so 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 that's what we're gonna do here. So all right, um, but yeah, the the uh, the campaign was the, the 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 campaign marathon was awesome. So this is of course during the fundraising campaign for Signum University. Um, we, uh, our goal was to raise $5,000 in support of Signum and its programs, um, on, uh, Saturday during the Grifflet stream. And we ended up raising 8,500 and this is the really exciting thing. And near the end of that, we actually got a very generous donation. Um, uh, someone pledged $2,500 in matching funds. So for, for every uh, dollar donated to the, to the Lotro Fund uh, thereafter, we were, he was going to was gonna match it up to $2,500. Um, and so we raised another $500 after that point. So we still have $2,000 outstanding in the, uh, in the matching funds that we uh, uh that we'd really like to 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 bring in um so i saw somebody asking earlier on if if you could still donate to that you absolutely can um if you yeah i see so uh, uh i see fair Vannon is giving uh, uh giving the 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 web address there for our annual fund page and uh the uh and uh fair Vannon, if you could give the uh, specific the mythgard donation page the one with the lotro code on it so that people can can have that right that correct link there um so that your donation will be marked to support uh Grifflet's efforts that would be great so yeah it was um it was awesome so so we're we're hoping to to make the rest of our matching funds and then uh when we do that we will be over ten thousand dollars at which point, so okay, so I had I had I sort of promised a series of extra extra streaming goodies uh, for uh, the time sort of different come thresholds to the of donations of that we were reaching. Um, the um, first, there it is. There's the link right there. Um, okay, so where am I going? I'm going no, I'm going to the Chamber of the Crossroads. So okay, so our first preliminary goal was 2,500. And if we got to 2,500, I was going to do an extra instance of everybody's choice. And uh, we got to 2,500 within like an hour or so. And um, the 
very quick agreement, apparently. I missed the agreement, actually. I didn't even, hours later, I didn't realize that it happened. But, uh, uh, but uh, while I wasn't paying attention, uh, everyone else decided that f- we would do the rift, because I've never run the rift before. So we're going to run the rift, uh, and I, I will stream that as the, um, uh, the, the sort of the reward for hitting our 2500 hour goal. The $5,000 goal is the one that I had been publishing before, which is I do a follow-up marathon. So, um, uh, so I'm going to do another, so that's, and that's officially going to happen now. Uh, I'm going to do, it's the 22nd of October. So two weeks from tomorrow is going to be the second marathon, the Wigand marathon. And just that you sort of know the distinction between my two characters, uh, when I'm streaming, with Grifflet, I'm, I'm the the Grifflet stuff I've done before. I've there's a lot of stuff that I'm learning as I'm going through Grifflet because most of the Grifflet most of the stuff that Grifflet is doing I've only ever done once before, um, and of course if you know me I love reading and rereading things and I usually don't pick up on most stuff until I read it for the second time. So Grifflet is like my rereading of uh, of the, the sort of the whole turbine world and uh, and of the questing structure and storylines in particular. Um, so, so that's what Grifflet is doing, is my rereading and going through the entire epic quest line. And I've never had any, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think any of my characters have ever finished all of the epic quest line. Um, so that's what, uh, so that's what Grifflet is up to. When I, when I stream on Wigand, Wigand is my guardian. He's my very first ever character and still, though narrowly, the highest level of my characters. He's only level 76, but still the highest of my characters. So when I'm streaming Wigand, Wigand is my explorer. When I'm stre- streaming Wigand, it means I am going to places and seeing things in the game that I have in all honesty and totally legitimately never seen before. So when I'm streaming Wigand, you get to see my very first reaction to stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, and usually, I, I, you guys should be careful about spoilers because I legitimately don't know what's coming next uh, and what things are coming up. So um, if you think you might enjoy uh, watching me stumbling around and discovering. So during the Wigan Marathon, we're g- I'm going to start in the Brownlands because I've never been to the Brownlands before and I'm right on the edge of the Brownlands. So uh, uh, so I'm really excited to see the Brownlands uh, and look for evidence of Entwives. That's the, totally the reason why I'm going to the Brownlands. Uh, the, then after that, I'm going to finally cross the bridge and enter Rohan, uh, enter Rohan proper. And I'm going to get my war steed. I've never ridden a war steed before. I've never done that with any of my characters. So I'll be I'll be getting my war steed for the first time. And then uh, people were expressing a desire. Um, people were expressing a desire to uh, 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 to to go war banding. I'm not sure I really understand what that means. I understand that I guess there are like bosses that move around on mounts with a whole bunch of other guys, and they kind of roam around and you fight them. I, that's the full sophistication and extent of my, of my knowledge. So anyway, um, so we're, we're going to do that. Um, we're going to do that on, uh, on during the Wigan marathon as well as after I get my, 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 my war steed. So, um, so that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. Now we had, uh, set another goal for 7,500 and what, I wasn't really sure what to offer if we made 7,500. If we made 10,000, we had agreed that I would do, I would stream the entire Road to Erebor instance chain because I've never done that. I've been really excited to do that instance chain um, and to see Erebor and Dale and stuff. So uh, so we're going to, so if, if we get to 10,000, we will also do the entire Road to Erebor in, instance chain. There's another intermediary one that I wanted to do and um, the, there was some discussion about this, and uh, we decided that what we would do for hitting 7,500, which we which we did just do, that's our, our most recently accomplished goal. Um, w- when we hit 7,500, we decided we would do one of the Mor- that Grifflet would get to do one of the Moria instances, um, which you know most of the Fellowship instances. Um, when I soloed Moria, I just skipped them all, um, so most of them I haven't done. And uh, so Grifflet is going to do Phil Gashan, I think is the one, if uh, 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 and uh, uh, Maven can correct me if I'm getting that wrong. Um, but that's the um, that's the one that we're going to uh, that we're going to do um, as as our intermediate goal. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, Captain Thunderheart isn't distracting me. Um, I just noticed that he was there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh dear. <clears throat> Remember, it's all lies. Okay. Um, so Grifflet is back, and he, he wants to he wants to come in to see he's going to say hi to Bosi, but Bosi just sent him off, so he's good. Uh, so he's going to go and see some parts of Moria that he hasn't seen before. So he's going to talk to Lickmund over here. Hey, Lickmund. We can only hope that Durin's bane sleeps deeply. Welcome to the Chamber of the Crosswoods. Hey, I've kind of been here, but I didn't get to talk to you before, so that's all good. I've jumped down that well like 15 times already. Um, you know, a lot of business down in the waterworks. You're fairly busy here, right? Okay, um, I'm glad I can help. Um, your encampment is a vital link in the supply chain between Durin's Threshold and the 21st Hall. Right, I can, I, I can imagine. It's nearly impossible for anything to get past us here without us spotting them, so it's very important that we not fail to hold this chamber against anything the goblins and orcs can throw at us. Okay. All right, so I should talk to Falstaff, Gansi, and Rink, huh? Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll do that. If we drive the orcs from Khazad Doom, right. will it be enough? If we drive them from Khazad Doom, will it be enough? That's an interesting question, Lickmon. Do you mean, if we drive them from Khazad Doom, will we have done enough against the orcs? That is, should we carry on pursuing them and hunting them down? Is, is that the question? Or when you say, once we've driven the orcs from Khazad Doom, will it be enough in the sense of, having driven the orcs, will we have many other things that we have to drive out? And, and, and will there be other things to accomplish before Mor Moria will be truly ours? Um, uh, both really good questions, Lickmund. I would recommend that you do, in fact, leave the orcs alone after you drive them out. Driving them out seems like it would probably be sufficient. Um, will you have more to do? Yes. Like, there's redecorating, right? The thing of all the refurbishment that's going to be required. Um, now, fortunately, Durin's Bane has already been taken care of, so... You know, if you take care of the orcs, you're still going to have some unwelcome guests. There's still, uh, as I recall, seeing last Saturday a fungus problem in certain places, and, and there's a, a fair bit of mildew accumulation in, in certain regions. Uh, but really, even down in the fiery region, they have really excellent wooden beams down there uh, and iron bars. So, you know, perfect for barricades. So I think it's um, really... You're going to be fine once you drive the orcs out. I would, I would, I would stick with that primary goal, really. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so Crum discovered a large goblin camp in the westernmost chamber. Right. He's only scattered on the outskirts. All right. I might get to talk to Crum, but I'm not quite sure about this. Um, but anyway, let's talk to let's talk to Falstaff. Oh man, I kind of wish that Falstaff. Fostolf were particularly fat. But anyway, if we okay. drive the orcs from Casa Doom, right. yep, would it be enough? Well, yeah, we just talked about that, man. It told, it just stop obsessing. I am not permitted to leave my post here, but these incessant drums are driving me mad. <laughs> drums. Drums in the deep. I know that's so annoying, isn't it, when there are drums in the deep? Um, uh, that's great, because, of course, this is the room where they first hear the sounds, right? Um, it's the sound of a hammer that they hear coming after Pippin throws the stone down. But, um, yeah, okay. Um, so there's a band of goblins responsible for that din. <laughs> I love it. So now we're taking the hearing of drums, which is one of the really ominous things. I mean, I love that part of the book when, um, when you know, Tolkien is imitating the sound of the drums. Doom, doom, doom. And the way that that merges into, you know, the, the way that that piece of onomatopoeia becomes the word, right? Doom. Doom after Gandalf falls and meets his doom. Right? It's really cool. I, I, I love I love how that works. And here, this guy's just like, the drums are annoying. Could you stop the drums? Okay. They've just become rowdy neighbors. Hear me out, friend, for I have a tale of glory to tell. A tale of glory. What's your tale of glory that you're running dangerously low on supplies? Now that is glorious and sounds like a really marvelous story. Um, <clears throat> you were bringing a cart over. All right, tell me, this is going to be glorious. But we were ambushed outside of Minarbal. Oh, no. We were driven back before reinforcements could arrive, and the goblins made off with our supplies. That's dramatic. In a small way, tragic. Not glorious so much, though. Um, you'd be greatly appreciative. We could hunt down the missing crates. It's going to be a lean week. Having a lean week because supplies are low. Uh, is um, is is not also extremely glorious, but that's okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, Maven. See, I was going to just press on and meet Haldir, but I was kind of thinking, you know, if I if I carry on um, and, uh, you know, b being as far under level as I am and just kind of stay to the epic quest line, it's, it's just going to get I'm just going to get more and more um, under level as time goes on. So I thought I would take the opportunity to uh, visit some new parts of Moria and uh, um, spend some time down here. Get a couple more levels and then head out back out to the Gimrel Dale. Okay. Um, um, goblins are among the most ancient and bitter rivals of Durin's folk, and yet again they prove to be an obstacle in our path. Yes, yes they do. The chamber to the north has become inhabited by goblins. Then they're probably beating drums because they're really bad neighbors. Uh, if we ever hope to reclaim Durin's way for those who made it great, then we must drive our old foe away. Find the hall of the high stair and confront any goblins you may find. All right. We can do this. All right, so we've got a few quests, Chamber of the Crossroad quests to do here. Look at this guy. He's not so dangerous. Just because there are goblins, like, right outside the door here. Let's see. All right, so we're going to go... Which way are we going to go? I think we're going to go... I'm going to go around to the left here. Oh, yeah, look. There's a Moria Rider right there. So I'm going to goad up here. Okay. All right. Let's go find some goblin drums. So, so yeah, I think we're gonna start doing some of our, uh, our 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 special marathon fundraising awards very soon. Um, I'd like to get our rift trip together uh, pretty quickly. Um, my thought is, normally um, the Mythgard kin, uh, normally the Mythgard kin does alternate Tuesday meetings. We do Mythgard adventures where we've been going through the. Uh, the Bingo Boffin chain, and we've also been doing the In Their Absence instance chain. We've been kind of alternating between those two uh, on alternate Tuesdays. And so my thought is, I think we're probably going to just do... Um, let's see, does this guy count as the high stair thing? Oh, yeah, he does. Okay. All right. Um... Oh, I can't do them both. Okay, so um, anyway, yeah, so alternate Tuesday. So my, my thought is I want to do the um, I want to do the the extra streams and stuff on the Tuesday in between if we can do that. So we'll see how the timing works out there. But that's at this point anyway. That's the plan. Um, so, our, oh, look, there are the drums. Got some goblin drums here. Let's see. Let's let's take a look at these drums. They've uh, they've got the eye on them. Nice. No, so they got the eye, not the not the white hand, right? So these aren't these aren't Sol these aren't Saruman drums. Okay. Um, so yeah, so maybe, maybe we can get our rift run together on uh, the next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we're going to be doing In Their Absence again, but maybe the Tuesday after that, so like a week and a half from now, I'm uh, sort of thinking out loud here, Maven's over there making notes, being like, oh, um, okay, yeah, nice of you to tell me that. Um, Anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'd, li I'd like to I'd like to get going on them soon. I would not want to be having a uh, a debt of extra instances and uh, bonus streams to be paying off for months and months. Um, all right. Uh, so anyway, so that's going to be really fun. I've heard so much about the rift, uh, and I am uh, I am very interested. I I, I, I hear there's a there's, a, there's another Balrog to be had, so that'll be that'll be exciting. 
we had a, a really fun session talking about the rift back when we were doing the um, the skirmish that takes place in the rift. I forget the name of that one, but whichever skirmish um, is uh, is riftable. We were we were talking there about the 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 rift in general and the fire giants and trying to understand exactly what's meant to be going on there in the rift. All right. Making some good progress here. All right. Okay. More of all. You know what's funny about the more of all? I uh, was doing. Oh, who's fighting me? This guy. All right, I'll run over here. Um, I was doing the film film project, and uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the it's the podcast episode I do immediately before uh, coming on the stream. Um, sometimes, literally immediately before, I just switch from one to the other. But um, anyway, uh, the in the film film project, basically the the, the the short version of what that is and what we do is uh, we're going through the Silmarillion and we're planning a theoretical adaptation, a theoretical serial TV adaptation of the Silmarillion. Totally theoretical. We're not contracted to do this. Uh, we're just sort of imagining what an adaptation would look like and thinking through uh, the fun imaginative challenges of doing that. Um, and so recently, we're in uh, season two of the Silm Film Project. We're, we're, we're planning the second season. And so we're do, we're, which begins, the second season of our Silmarillion uh, uh, film starts at the awakening of the elves from Quivienne and it ends at the darkening of Valinor. So if you know the Silmarillion, you'll know the, the part that I'm talking about. It's the introduction to the elves. Um, so one of the things that we're doing is we're introducing the bad guys. And so in particular, sort of Sauron and his posse Right, and uh, one of, of course, one of his uh, quite prominent posse members is uh, uh, Thorin Gwethel, the vampire. Uh, it was just like the, the, the vampire bat, um, and of course we meet her uh, in the Baron and Luthien story. Well, we meet her after she's dead, which is frankly awkward for everybody. Um, but she's she's a vampire. She's a bat. Um, when Tolkien says vampire, he seems to really just mean vampire bat. That was a fairly common usage of the word um, back in the late 19th, early 20th century. Um, anyway, so um, we, we, we know that she is in the form of a bat, but we don't know anything else about her. So <clears throat> in some film project, we decided we should totally uh, bring Thuring Gwethel in. Um, and make her an ally of Sauron from, from, from much earlier on. And I was talking about how, you know, what I imagined Thurin Gwethel looking like. And we decided, by the way, that we were going to make her not a sort of sexualized, you know, sort of scantily clad, slinky kind of, uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of female character. But we were going to, we were going to make her, oh, here we are stairs. This the, these are the stairs I'm looking for. Did I get all the drums? Oh, here's, here's the other one. Um, I'm using the drums. Oh. I'm trying to do that before I can get interrupted. Um, anyway, so so we're, we're talking about what I imagined Thurin Gwethel as, as looking like, and I was kind of describing her. I'm like, well, she's got to be sort of, you know, kind of bat-like, but she should be mostly, you know, she'd be red recognizably human, but still with some sort of bat characteristics. And uh, Robert Brown, one of our regular listeners and also a, 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 a Lotro player, said, so basically you want her to be a Moraval. And I was like, yes, that's in fact exactly what was in my mind, though I hadn't really thought it through or acknowledged it. But yeah, that, that kind of was exactly how I was picturing Thuring Gwetho. One of the ways in which Lotro has kind of informed my... Uh, my imagination there. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. We got our. We defeated the goblins there. We took out the drums, so we're two thirds of the way there. We haven't talked to Crumb. We haven't found any supply crates, so we're still looking around for those. There's the big stair. 
Ah, there's a supply crate, right? These are all up here. Getting into supply crate zone here. Okay, good, good. Hey, look, I enjoy having a missile weapon. Um. Yeah, Silm film has been a lot of fun. If you've ever read The Silmarillion and been confused by it uh, and sort of wanted to get to know it better and to, to, to kind of keep up with it more, I recommend the Silm Film Project. It's been, uh, it's been really neat. We're just talking about Feanor, Feanor's childhood and his wife today. So, um, All right, cool. First supply crate. There's some more supply crates up here. There we go. Important to collect supplies. It, it that does seem to be, by the way, it does seem to me fairly well thought out that uh, the chamber of the cross crossroads, given its position, its relative position in Moria, would be essentially a supply dump. That uh, that makes sense. The, the both. You know their choice of the twenty-first hall as the kind of central place of the dwarves uh, that are established here, and the chamber of the crossroads is this really important uh, midway point. Makes a lot of sense from the descriptions we get in the book. Hey, Carl. dark things dwell now in Moria. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to come with you. I have to escort you. Do I have to keep you alive? Oh man, Crom, I'm bad at that. You should. Oh, bats. Great. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, more posthumous screaming by the goblin. The goblins here are much better dug in than I thought they were. Oh, d dug in. Right. Well, because I was going to say it's really, it's made out of stone, so they don't really need to dig in. Like, they're not literally digging trenches, right? Which is what that expression means. But, um, but right, they're, they're thoroughly entrenched in a sort of metaphys metaphorical standpoint. I get that. The White Hand Emissary. Okay. So he's sending emissaries, Saruman is sending emissaries. Um, that's actually kind of interesting. So he's attempting to ally himself with the orcs of Moria who generally worship Sauron, right? I mean, again, we saw that um, just on the drums that those goblins were beating, right? Um, but among them here is uh, an emissary of Sauron. Or of Saruman, rather. So he's not just infiltrating. He's not just sneaking in. It's not. It's not a clandestine turf war. It's just um, there's there's ambassadorial negotiations going on, which is kind of interesting. Interesting, right? Because it falls in a, a kind of a, a middle ground in the progress of Saruman's career. Um, that is, he's not openly remaining an enemy. He's not remaining an open enemy of Sauron with the, you know, with the, the good guys. Um, man, these keepers. Um, he's yeah. So he's not remaining an enemy and only sneaking in people and spies that he hopes nobody notices are connected with him. He's not doing that. He's much more overtly uh, siding with the enemy, right? And yet, he is also not serving Sauron, right? Um, the situation is not that we're finding this, you know, inexplicable collusion between Saruman, you know, Saruman's creatures and Sauron's creatures. It's, uh, but, so he has enough independence from Sauron to need to send an emissary as if it were a foreign kingdom um, but he's not sufficiently independent just to separate himself entirely he still is trying to so, oh you vanished oh you're going to return to the chamber of the crossroads 
Okay. All right, fair enough. Hang on. Treasure. Gotta do my burglarious thing. Okay. Excellent. All right, so... What are we looking for? We still need supply crates. All right. We can do that. I think. Just missed the opening. No? Okay. Going down this way. I still find it interesting, and I talked about this a little bit before, that we see Saruman ex trying to extend his, uh, his dominion into Moria at all. Um, I mean, if anything, it seems like a, a signal that you'd think that Sauron himself would pick up on, right? Um, you know, Sauron's enemies don't need to be driven out of Moria, right? Sauron's hold on Moria doesn't need uh, consolidation or anything. What is that? So you'd think that uh, Saruman attempting to work his way in, you know, sort of to move in on Moria, it's not quite a declaration of war on Sauron himself, but it's kind of close. I never noticed that ceiling before. So again, we have this, this, uh, you know, pentagons with the larger hexagonal openings. We've seen that pattern on the tiling before. I don't remember seeing it on the ceiling like this. And these, I guess they're not suns. I, my first thought looking at them as I was running past was that they were they were sunbursts, but I don't think they are. All right. Oh, look. Somebody else. Um, okay, there's a... Supply chest, supply crate, here somewhere, right there, I guess. All right. Now, there's that pattern that keeps bewildering me here. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't understand this pattern. I was commenting on this several times during the during the marathon. Why? Because it's the, the, so much of the rest of the dwarves, um, you know, carvings are symmetrical. So having that asymmetry there puts me off. There, I can't figure it out. All right, one more supply crate. And we're good. All right. Let's bring everything back. Okay, so, um... Ah, good questions. Another lore question here, which I can answer. Let me turn in some quests here. Hey, Gancy, here are your supplies. The is coming. Okay. I wouldn't want you to abandon this vital watch post. It is said that Durin's Bane dwells here. Yeah. Though we have not seen it. Yeah, and fortunately for you, you won't, but... Okay. You're very much looking forward to taking your nap in a while. Okay. It's almost nap time for you, is it? Um... Oh, right, because of the drums. Right, yeah, you're the guy who couldn't sleep. Right, okay. I'm like, I'm kind of sleepy. I could use a nap, too, there, but uh, yeah, it's all good. Okay. All right, Rink. The day of the dwarves is coming. <laughs> the day of the dwarves. One wonders exactly what that would look like. Um, okay. Uh, you've dealt a blow to the goblins laying hold to the hall. Wait. What? Claim, you mean? Laying claim to the hall? It's all right, Brink. I know common isn't your first language. I get it. 
Um, and this is a welcome first step in taking back the high stair. We must continue to be vigilant against the goblins for them not easily retreat. Okay, I've given you hope. I'm so glad to hear that. It's super encouraging. All right, let's see what's... Uh, got another rune here. Okay. All right. Okay, Lickmund, I did all the things. If it were not for the prospect of finding Mithril, I would not have come here. Okay. You can see some other pressing matters. Many foul things dwell in the depths of the mountains. I fear the orcs will be the least of our troubles. Durin's Way is home to precious few of the articles of our ancestors, many of which have been lost or destroyed. Okay, Listine has begun searching out, searching these artifacts. Okay. In the hope of preserving the history of our craft. Uh, all right. Sure, I can carry messages. That seems fine. Malin came, but we have heard no word from him. Hmm. Camp is larger. It lies off the main road. Yeah, it's fine. You can avoid it. Okay. Um... All right. Talk to Listin at the entrance of Xerox Zigo. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go to Xerox Zigo. Oh, ooh. Legendary item needs reforge. Of course it does. Look, there it is. Let's go do that before I leave. Hey there, Forge Master. The Orcs of Moria have much to account for. Let's see. Trick and trick removal. Yeah. Okay, Kukras. I'm get to reforge all my small ones here. All right. Oh, that's just not the one I meant. This is the one I meant. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I gotta beef up the DPS of my sword again. Nice. Didn't get to max it before. Let's see. We want... We want burglar bleed damage. That's what we want. Okay. Good. Ooh, and sneak movement speed. Nice. Max the sneak movement speed addition. Okay. Woohoo! All right. Um, let's go to Xerox Zigil. Because Griffith wants to look around Xerox Zigil. And as we're traveling there. Lore question. So, uh, Mikolajek, Mikolajek asks, We know the origins of men, elves, and dwarves, but who created hobbits? And what are they? A species of their own? Or are they maybe Melkor-made twisted species of men, like orcs are a twisted image of elves? Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I see uh, Van Oppel is like, Wow, you're already in Moria? Yeah, Van Oppel, about that. Um, if you missed one week, you did miss a lot. I was on book 14 of the Epic Quest chain, and then a week later, <laughs> I'm, I'm in book 6 of volume 2. So yeah, it's like marathon. I did a 14-hour session, went through all of Moria. It was, it was a little intense. Uh, not to mention the like 6 hours or 6 to 8 hours of streaming I did earlier in the week to get ready for it. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, 
kind of crazy. Anyhow, okay, so... Ooh, what's at the top of the stairs? What is that? That's not your standard Sauron altar. Is this a dwarvish thing? It's quite abstract. Isn't it? No, it's a raven. That's totally a raven. Oh, darn it, would you? I hate it when they do that. Oh, these guys, look, you're just. Whom are you trying to annoy? Okay, the answer to that question is actually obvious. Um, okay, so my lower question was about hobbits. Where do hobbits come from? This is a great question. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very common question, but the answer to this isn't really obvious. Tolkien doesn't talk about it all that much. And by the way, don't you think that's probably a raven? A raven statue? I couldn't tell from the front what it was, but from the side, those are obviously wings coming down. Yeah, I think it's a raven statue. I wonder what this is meant to be, these kind of danglies. I don't understand that. Hmm. Anyway, okay, hobbits, where do they come from? Well, I think we can start pretty... I mean, so let's just say, to begin with, we don't know, right? We have to, we have to start with that a whole bunch of the times. We don't know. But what can we conclude? What, what sort of plausible conclusions do we think we can draw? Um, I think we can start with um, uh, where you ended, uh, Makoliak, and that's maybe Melkor made a twisted species of men like orcs or a twisted image of elves. No, no. There, I think, um, <clears throat> I think that that's um, clearly not what happened. Um, and you can tell for several reasons. First of all, it's very clear that the hobbits are not <clears throat> warped or twisted. Um, the thing that the orcs... In, the primary thing that characterizes orcs is their complete like devotion to, 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 to anger and hatred and their... Uh, um, Yeah, so they're just their 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 ugliness, their relentlessness. They're just they're just unhappy, right? Um, there's this real question: Do orcs have souls or free will at all? And I mean, the answer to that, of course, when the day of the Tolkien originally is invented orcs, they were just they were they were like robots. They were created, they were made or constructed by Melkor, and they were animated by his. Um, by his malice. Um, even in the later versions where it seems that that's not the case, right? But in the Lord of the Rings, I mean, um, when by the time we get to the Lord of the Rings, um, Tolkien has shifted his theology and he's now saying things like nothing was evil in the beginning. Uh, the evil can't make real new things. It can only, it can only mar, right? It, it can't make. Um, so he wasn't talking like that originally. Um, but now he is talking like that. So, in that in that later world, the or the wills of the orcs seem to be enslaved to Morgoth. So they do have wills of their own, but their wills are completely enslaved, so they don't have completely free will. Um, in uh, in that way. So okay, but this is not where hobbits are, right? Uh, hobbits are clearly not twisted, perverted, enslaved, uh, anything like orcs are. So clearly they're not an evil imitation or mockery or corruption of men. Whatever their relationship with men, that clearly isn't it. The time has come to drive forth the orcs from our kingdom. Oh. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to follow him here. He wasn't expecting any messages. This artifact was not far from here at all. It's wonderful news. Okay, so you might be able to preserve one lost artifact. Okay. Good for you. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, so what then are hobbits? Well, let's collect a couple more quests here. We have seen naught of Durin's Bane. Be wary if you journey into Moria. Good idea. Not all endeavors have gone well for us in Moria. Well, that's not surprising at all. Um, and uh, kind of interesting that the storyline includes some of their failures here. One early settlement in Durin's Way was an outpost built by Gerwith at Gloco Ru in the south. The encampment became overrun by goblins and was burned entirely, while only Gwareth and a few others managed to escape. Notice how they leave out who did the burning, right? I became overrun by goblins and was burned entirely. You know, it's like mistakes were made, right? Using the, um, using the passive voice in order to, to sort of conceal the subject. Similarly here, right? Uh, the encampment was burned entirely um, while Gwareth escaped. So did he set the fire and barely escaped it himself? I'm not sure. I, anyway, the goblins threaten to fortify Glokuru and remain a persistent danger to us if we do not act against them. Uh, head there and defeat as many of them as you can. Oh, okay, I can probably do that. Abide here a moment and speak with me. Okay. Um, let's talk about a dwarf tradition here. Um, we have many traditions, this one not the least. When we head into battle, we bring with us a letter. If we fall, that letter will be returned home by the survivors if we remain. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. That seems a little weird, doesn't it? Here's why I think it's weird. If dead dwarves always have a letter on them, on their person, more people would figure out the dwarfish language, right? Maybe it's not in the dwarfish language. Maybe they write the letters in something else, but which is possible, I guess. But it still seems a little strange. Anyway, okay, many of us have come to Moria, and some of us have fallen. And now it appears that the Merivile have discovered these letters and taken a perverse pleasure in keeping them as trophies of victory against us. The honor of our warriors and the peace of mind of their families demand that we recover these letters from the enemy whenever possible and return them to their rightful homes. Okay, I hope you retrieve the letters. Again, like the idea that these letters must by necessity be constantly falling into the the hands of others seems a little bit strange, though. But, okay. Okay, search the body for the letters. Okay. Let's see. How many quests do you have? We have seen naught of Durin's Bane. The rare yeah, you must keep safe the artifacts. Moria. Totally agree. Studying these relics give insights to the untold legends of our forefathers. Yes, if only you could figure out how to forge as well as your forefathers. You have information that one such object, a mythical shield, was last seen in Uflump, in Uflump Moor. Okay. Cool. Uflump Moor. Well, look. We have little time to speak. Great events have been set in motion. Okay. You want me to kill the emissaries of the White Hand? I may or may not do that. Welcome to Casa Doom. Mm -hmm. Stay and speak with me a moment. Okay, let's see. Um, collecting supplies and scouting chambers is all well and good. Oh, you're going to go goblin hunting. You want me to go goblin hunting? Okay. Nearly every room and corridor of Khazadum is crawling with goblins. Okay, yeah, I did notice there were quite a few of them about. Search to the west for the goblin captain who goes by the name of Gomig. All right, I'll see if I see him. If I see him, I'll take him out. All right. I have to go a little bit early today. I have uh, family in town visiting, so I've got I've to go just a little bit early. But... Um, I still have a little bit more time. So while we're here, I want to sneak out. 
Oh yeah. Okay, Grifflet. Let's go see what we can find. All right. Um, so hobbits. I was talking about hobbits. Um, and can I get down this way? I think I can. Oh yeah! Look at that. I found what I was looking for. The Balrog corpse. The Balrog crater, really. So if the Balrog... That's a great view of the Balrog crater. The Balrog crater is down there. Where did they fall from? Looking around, let's... Of course, if it weren't a snowstorm, it'd be a little bit easier to see. See up over here? Womp? Down that way? I'm gonna get closer. Anyway, okay, so I was talking about um, hobbits. So hobbits, as I say, clearly, at least I think it's fairly clear, clearly not twisted humans. So what are they? Well, putting together the evidence that we have Putting together the evidence that we have, um, they're clearly related to men, right? I mean, that's that's perfectly clear. Um, they have very similar lifespan to men. They don't have. A, they don't seem to have a different destiny from men. Um, the only difference between hobbits and men, as far as we can tell, is that uh, um, they are smaller. Right, so they're shorter, and that's really that's really the only thing that um, the only thing that we learn about <clears throat> about the, the the difference between hobbits and men. Um, and yeah, it's true. I, I, Druids fire, just as you're saying, even Ents don't know the difference between that is like they've never heard of hobbits, which suggests they're not a fundamentally different creature. They give them a different line in the lists, right? But um, he's got them. Treebeard has them categorized out, right? And he doesn't have a place for hobbits that suggests that they're not, in fact, different. Um, I think... Oh, this is... I love how I take... Uh, how you take damage. Like, it's still hot from where the from where the Balrog fell. Also, I'm being attacked by a dragonet. Hang on, let me get off of the corpse of Durin's Bane. Excellent. This is the site that Grifflet came to see. Um, anyway, yeah, so so I don't think they're fundamentally different creatures from men. I think they are men who have somehow, some way, for some reason, developed in such a way as to get shorter. Everything else about their culture and nature and everything can be explained just by the cultural differences of where they you know, where they ended up, where, you know, how they, how they were separated from the rest of mankind. Why and how did they get really short? I don't know. But let me tell you the reason why I think they are connected to men, although when we're told they're connected to men. But the reason why I, you know, why do I think it's plausible that they would, um, that they would be men, essentially just really short men? Um, it's because of the Druidon. Uh, the Wozes, the wild men of the woods, um, Khan Buri Khan and his folk. Oh, there's, I was trying to figure out, like, where's his head? There's his hand. Okay. Also, his, like, rib cage is all crushed and gaping open. That's kind of cool. There's his tattered vestigial wings. Nice. That is so cool. Um, anyway, yeah, so, okay. The Wozes. If you read the essay on the Druidon in Unfinished Tales, it's at the very end of Unfinished Tales. You will... Oh, that is in, in, the, in, in part four of Unfinished Tales. Um, it's not the very final essay. 
you read about the Druidon, about the Wozes, and they're men. They're they're explicitly we're told they're they're you know connected with the Adain, with the you know the faithful men, you know, the faithful houses of men. But they're very different, and they have like whole different. Se- they they also change in stature. They become much shorter, not hobbit size, but but very much but but a great deal shorter. They're, so they're you know where hobbits are like two to three feet tall, uh, Druidon are like four feet tall basically. I mean they're they're, they're short. Um, they're short and they're squat and they have these powers. You know what is described in the the chapter on the Druidon. They have the power to. Um, uh, they have the power to carve stone images like the Pukulmen and um, invest those images with their own spirits. They're called watchstones, so that those stones, their own perceptions and awareness can kind of go out through those stones. They seem to be able to animate the stones. Um, there's the story, the story of the faithful stone that Tolkien includes, that Christopher has added into that chapter on the Druidine. Um and the Faithful Stone is a story about this. There's this Drug, uh, you know, the Druidon, um, who lives with the, uh, this family of, of other men, of the people of Haleth. And he's got to go away. He's got to, you know, his, uh, his kinsman is, is sick, and so he's going to go and tend his sick kinsman, but he leaves the, the watchstone behind him. And orcs attack, and they set fire to the house in the night, and the statue comes alive and tramples out the fire, uh, and uh, and takes care of things. And when the Droog who made the stone comes back, he shows that his legs are all blistered with burns, as if it were his feet that had stomped out the fire, right? So there's clearly this, like, connection between him and the statue. There aren't any people that can do anything like that, so far as we know, but it's explicit that the Druidon are connected with... Uh, that the Druidon are connected with uh, 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 humans. If humans can kind of go into that one variation, right, when they uh, where they can they can become the Druidine, uh they can clearly become hobbits too. So that seems to be. Um, but of course, the real answer to the question, uh, the other answer, to the the question, the, the question from the other perspective, is that. Uh, Tolkien invented hobbits totally independently, right? He, he wasn't inventing a consistent origin story for them when he made them. Um, he made Bilbo Baggins, the hobbit, up out of whole cloth and wrote the story about him called The Hobbit, and it was not a part of this world. This world didn't even exist in the same way. Later on, he integrates The Hobbit, the book, and hobbits, the characters, you know, the race, into his mythology into his world, which becomes in that integration becomes the Lord of the Rings. Um, but he had never invented that backstory and never got around to telling it because, of course, the hobbits don't remember. They're the ones who are keeping the records and they don't have any records of their origins. So he never says. Um, OK. All right. Um, well, I think I should I should run. Um, I was hoping to get to. Durin's Bane today, and so I have. And I'm getting attacked now by a warg, which is also fine. Uh, I'm not afraid of that. So I think Griffin is going to... Gr- Griffin. Griffith, Griffith is going to hang out here and um, uh, sort of blow over the fall of Durin's Bane here for a little bit more. Um, and then next week he'll go looking in some... I think I'm going to go back down to the Redhorn Loads for a little while. and uh, And then... And soon I'm, I'll head back out to Dimrill Dale and go find, go find Haldir. But thanks for joining me today for a slightly short uh, stream. But again, we've uh, if you average this week and last week together, it'll come out to something more than the normal stream still, uh, considering I streamed for like 22 hours last week. So, um, uh, oh, and I did want to mention though. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that the very generous $2,500 donation, the matching funds that we were given. Um, of which, as I said, still two thousand dollars left. We have to raise in order to get them. Um, he uh, he did make one stipulation, one condition, for his donation, and that is, uh, he said that he wanted to see me do a Lotro stream with my son. So my eight-year-old son Matthias has been playing Lotro, and uh, he wanted to see me do a stream with my son. Um, so I'm gonna do that. 
Uh, I'm definitely planning to do that. Um, I, I told this story to my son, Matthias, the next day. Um, and he was like, okay, I guess we could do that. And it took him about two minutes to think it over and then realize how cool this was. Uh, so he decided that he totally wanted to do this. He, uh, he watches a bunch of gaming uh, video. He follows a bunch of, ga uh, you know, of, uh, of, of streaming, uh, you know, game streams on YouTube. Uh, so the idea that he could be on YouTube in a game stream was uh, uh, a, a very, uh, a very attractive idea to him. So he's, he's extremely excited. Um, he is only his highest character because he keeps starting over. His highest character is only level 16. Um, he's got a level 16 guardian. So I'm going to actually use an, uh, an old character I've never streamed on before. I've got a level 22 minstrel which I'll take and uh, I'll follow him around with uh, with the minstrel and, and I'll uh, I will uh, I will try to follow the wonderful example of Kiriana and just uh, just stealth heal him while uh, he fights uh, so we'll 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 see so I'm not sure the exact I think it's probably gonna have to be on a Saturday that we'll do that stream um, not this Saturday um, not this Saturday it'll probably be next Saturday Saturday the Fifteenth, uh, yeah, Saturday the fifteenth. We'll 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 try for so we'll see. Uh, so keep an eye out for that the uh, the Olson family stream. But anyway, thanks very much for joining me again this week, and I will see you guys soon for more Grifflet and lots of other things. Thanks again for your generous support of our fundraising campaign to support Signum University and its awesome educational mission and programs. And I hope that you will, if you haven't donated, I hope you'll consider donating uh, to help us to, to reach our goal of getting those $2,000 in matching funds and getting our entire Lotro appeal up over $10,000 so we can do the Road to Erebor quest chain and stream those. Thanks, everybody. See you guys later. Bye now. <laughs>